Check one two. Check. And now you see why I want to do that. Check one two. Hey, one two. Check one two. Check check one two. Hey, one two. Check 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 one two. Check one two. Hey, one two. Hey hey one two. Check. Eight, one, two, check, check. Eight, one, two. You good with that?
Good afternoon. Good afternoon.
Good afternoon. To assist our participation in today's liturgy, please follow along in the worship aid and join all of our voices in sung prayer as indicated. At this time, we ask everyone to cease conversations and open our hearts in silent prayer as our music ministers share the prelude music. Xin kính chào cộng đồng dân chúa để giúp chúng ta tham dự phần phục vụ hôm nay. Mời mọi người cùng theo dõi phần hướng dẫn cũng như học chung tiếng hát để ngợi ca và cảm tạ. Giờ đây xin giữ thanh lặng và xin mời cộng đồng dân chúa cùng lắng động tâm hồn hợp ý với ca đoàn qua những khúc thánh nhạc của nghi thức khai mạc. Para ayudar a nuestra participación en la liturgia de hoy, por favor, sigan el orden del servicio y unamos todas nuestras voces en oración cantada como se indica. En este momento, les pedimos a todos que cesen las conversaciones y abramos nuestros corazones en oración silenciosa. Mientras nuestros ministros de música comparten la música de preludio.
gathered as God's holy people, we join our bishops, priests, and deacons this day to rejoice and give thanks at the ordination of Bishop-elect Thomas Dan Nguyen. To help make our celebration prayerful, please check to see that your cell phones are turned off. Please, no flash photography or video. All photographers and videographers are asked to stay in their seats so as to not disturb the prayer of others. Từ họp về đây, từ khắp nơi, như dân thánh của Thiên Chúa, cùng với các đức giám mục, các linh mục và các thầy phó tế, chúng ta hân hoan, vui mừng và tạ ơn trong dịp lễ phong chức giám mục cho linh mục Thomas Nguyễn Thái Thành của giáo phận Orange hôm nay để việc cử hành các nghi thức được trang nghiêm xin mọi người vui lòng tắt các điện thoại di động xin đừng dùng flash hoặc đèn cá nhân khi chụp hình và quay phim xin các thợ chụp hình và quay phim ngồi tại chỗ tránh đi lại để khỏi gây ra sự xáo trộn và chia trí trong khi các nghi thức đang được cử hành xin cảm ơn reunidos como el pueblo santo de dios nos unimos a nuestros obispos sacerdotes y diáconos en este día para regocijarnos y dar gracias por la ordenación del obispo electo Thomas Dan Nguyen, para ayudar a que nuestra celebración sea piadosa, revisen que sus teléfonos celulares estén apagados. Por favor, no se permite fotografía o video con flash. Se les pide a todos los fotógrafos y camarógrafos que permanezcan en sus asientos para no perturbar la oración de los demás.
two, three. I'll, I'll get you a second. Just tell. Front to the left. Just Cardinal Levada or mm -hmm. okay.
Pachiam. Brothers and sisters all gathered here in anticipation of joyful thanksgiving. We gather this day ever mindful of the many blessings that God has bestowed on each one of us and our local church, the Diocese of Orange. We celebrate this day in, partic in a particular way as Reverend Thomas Tan Nguyen is given the fullness of holy orders to become a bishop to assist me and Bishop Fryer to shepherd this local church. We welcome our, so, our many guests and family members this day, including the bishop elect's eight brothers and two sisters and their families, some of whom have come from quite a distance. The archbishops and bishops of the Orthodox churches and Oriental churches who are here in the sanctuary. We are honored as well to have Cardinal Mahoney and Cardinal Levada join us in prayer. In fraternal <laughs> unity, we have Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, the Holy Father's representative. We are very grateful for his presence. And we thank you, Archbishop, for your ministry, and especially ask you to send our prayers and best wishes to our Holy <coughs> Father as he just celebrated his 81st birthday. We welcome also the co-consecrators, Bishop Felipe de Jesus Esteves of the Diocese of St. Augustine in Florida, and Bishop Robert Baker, Bishop of Birmingham, Alabama, both friends for many years. With us is Archbishop Gomez, our Metropolitan, and good friend who was my principal consecrator in Fort Worth 12, over 12 years ago. Archbishop, you have been with us in moments of joy and moments of sorrow here in our diocese, and your presence is always a, sign, a welcome sign of the communion and the bonds we share here as the body of Christ here in the province of Los Angeles. Finally, a most special welcome to our con-celebrating bishops who have traveled from as far away as Vietnam and Canada to join us this day. We are blessed to have the members of the Order of St. Gregory, the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, the Order of Malta, the fourth degree color guard of the Knights of Columbus, and representatives from our 62 parishes and centers. Our deacons and religious to journey together, marking yet another joyous occasion in the sacred history of our diocese. This gathering today, in this season of Advent, is a visible expression of the communion of faith and unity that we share together as disciples and members of the body of Christ. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call us Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. And on earth.
God, eternal shepherd, who governing your flock with watchful care, choose to join Thomas, your servant and priest, to the College of Bishops this day. Grant, we pray, that by his holiness of life, he may everywhere prove to be a true witness to Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Took me 
mismo preparas la mesa, a despecho de mis adversarios, me unges la cabeza con perfume y llenas mi copa hasta los bordes. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pedro Hermanos, ya está cerca el final de todo Por tanto, vivan con sensatez y vigilancia para poder orar Sobre todo, mantengan en continua actividad el amor mutuo Pues el amor sepulta una multitud de pecados. Sean hospitalarios los unos con los otros sin quejas. Que cada uno, como buen administrador de la gracia multiforme de Dios, emplee para servir a los demás los dones recibidos. Quien habla, sea mensajero de las palabras de Dios. Quien se dedica a servir a los demás, que lo sirva con la fuerza que Dios le comunica. De modo que Dios sea glorificado en todo por medio de Jesucristo, a quien corresponde la gloria y el poder por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Most Reverend Father, the Holy Catholic Church, our mother, asks you to ordain this priest, Thomas Thontai, to the responsibility of the episcopate. Have you a mandate from the apostolic see? We have. Let it be read. Your Eminences, Jorge Cardinal Maoni and William Levada. Your Excellencies, Bishop Kevin Van, Robert Baca, and Felipe de Jesus Esteves. Auxiliary Bishop Timothy Freire. Auxiliary Bishop elect Thomas Tan Tain Guyen. My brothers, Archbishops and Bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful of the Diocese of Orange in California, dear friends. Last January, I joined with you here in San Columban Church for the ordination of Father Timothy Edward Freya as Auxiliary Bishop of Orange in California. Today, I do so again as Father Thomas Than Tai Guyan is ordained to the fullness of the priesthood and begins his ministry as a close and trusted collaborator of Bishop Van, the chief shepherd of this local church. However, I am also well aware that earlier this month, you have all suffered a great loss in the passing of Auxiliary Bishop Emeritus, Dominic Luang, who, together with Bishop Esteves, was to be a co-consecrator at this celebration. One of the consoling truths of our Catholic faith is that of the communion of the whole mystical body of Jesus Christ. As the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches, I quote, we believe in the communion of all the faithful in Christ, those who are pilgrims on earth, the dead who are being purified, and the blessed in heaven, all together forming one church. And we believe that in this communion, the merciful love of God and his saints is always attentive to our prayers. Indeed, I have no doubt that Bishop Luang is spiritually united with us this afternoon in this sacred liturgy, whispering a special prayer for our new auxiliary bishop, auxiliary bishop elect Nguyen. We are truly confident that together with auxiliary bishop Freya, you will support Bishop Van in caring for the pastoral needs of this beloved and ever-growing diocese, reaching out also to the community beyond. And now, with great joy, I will read for you the apostolic letter of appointment. As you always, as you all know, this, this is a letter which is being sent directly by our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and signed by him. It will be shown to you at the end of this reading. Of course, it is written in Latin, so we have prepared a nice, I hope it is nice, translation, not in, uh, not in uh, Vietnamese, no, in English. <laughs> Francis, bishop, servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Tan Tai Nguyen, so you, the Pope knows exactly how to pronounce your name, from the clergy of the Diocese of St. Augustine, and up to now, pastor there of St. Joseph Parish in, in Jacksonville, appointed auxiliary of the Cathedral See of Orange in California, and at the same time, elected titular bishop of Acaliso. Greetings and apostolic blessing. 
Not long ago, our venerable brother, Kevin William Vaughan, Bishop of Orange in California, requested an auxiliary bishop, owing to the pastoral needs of the church entrusted to him. Accordingly, as the chief shepherd of the Lord's flock, we judge that his request ought to be readily granted. Since you, beloved son, endowed as you are with the requisite qualities of mind and heart, as well as experience in ecclesial matters, seemed suitable for undertaking this office, we, for our part, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by our supreme apostolic authority, appoint you auxiliary of Orange in California, and at the same time, name you titular bishop of Acaliso, together with all the rights and obligations which, according to the norm of law, are connected to the episcopal dignity and such a position. You may receive ordination from any Catholic bishop outside the city of Rome, the liturgical laws being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity towards us and our successors. Finally, beloved son, joined in fraternal communion with the ordinary of Orange in California, be sure to fulfill the office being entrusted to you, making use especially of charity, the mother and queen of all virtues. May the gifts of the Paraclete Spirit, together with the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the prayerful intercession of the patrons saints of that truly beloved see, continually sustain you and gladden your spirit. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the sixth day of the month of October, in the year of the Lord 2017, the fifth of our pontificate. And it is signed, Francis.
Gracias a todos ustedes. Es un tiempo de mucha alegría para nosotros aquí en Orange. Welcome once again to all of you on this most joyful and deeply meaningful day for us as the body of Christ here. A day of welcome, rejoicing, and hope as we are daily now sent forth in the mission of preaching and living the gospel and building up the body of Christ. We welcome you, Bishop Thomas, into our family as one of our own, whom the Lord has called together and are truly grateful to the providence of God that has woven your family and your history and your faith and your call together with us as you say yes to the call of being a shepherd after the Lord's own heart. It is truly a joyful day for our diocese because the Lord and the church have given us another auxiliary bishop, Bishop Thomas Tan Nguyen, as we welcome him this day. Kinchao, we ba in Chiam from Chua Quito. Om Nai, Lamot Nyam Voi Lun, Chao Zao Fan Chung Ta. Chung Ta Kam Tian Chua, Vi Tian Chua. Va Zao Hoi Dan Ban Cho Chung Ta. Kotem Duk Chao Fu Ta Moi. Tamestan, Chung Ta Kung Chao Duk Don Duk Chao. that Bishop Eduardo Navarez from Phoenix, my seminary ordination classmate who is here today, will remember this. A number of the diocesan seminarians from Kenrick Seminary would gather many Friday evenings at the La Salette House of Studies in Maplewood, Missouri, near the seminary. We would gather together with the La Salettes to play cards on Friday nights. Maybe I would characterize those evenings as a mixture of the sacred and the profane, as I learned how to deal cards, uno only. <laughs> and as we were playing cards and having a good time together with the La Salettes, I would learn more about the history of La Salette. And of course, that learning and friendship with the La Salettes would continue as we prayed and often would study for exams together. Little did I know that what I learned at that time about dealing cards and receiving a hand that dealt would come into the present moment. Indeed, however, in the Lord's providence, one part of our lives in ministry, as you have found, do indeed prepare us for the next. My bishop years ago, George Lucas, taught me that. Looking back to that time as well for me, it was after all the same time that I began to know and to love and appreciate the courage of the Vietnamese people. Because we lived and studied with the CMC brothers, some of whom are here today, and they having faced the challenges of leaving and persecution. And they had arrived as refugees in Missouri just a couple years before we began seminary. And so all that, Thomas brings us together this day, our history. Thomas, you will say shortly, I do in the right in just a few moments, nine times to the responsibilities and obligations, and I dare say blessings, truly, of the life that you have been called to. I really believe, Thomas, with all my heart, that those nine I do's, you'll get them all right, right? Those nine I do's can find their way into what Eduardo and I, I and others learn in those encounters and relationships with the Las Salette missionaries, hace muchos años, many years ago in St. Louis, woven together with the sacred season, 
where we are now. Couple of points. I said I learned to receive hands and deal cards. Number one, the hand that you are dealt. One could say, Thomas, that your presence with us is a joyful, is saying a joyful and confident, and perhaps a bit nervous, yes to the Lord and to this hand that he has given you. In this act of faith, however, you will be led to journey with and minister to as a bishop. Many people who have all kinds of hands dealt to them, some joyful and others not. In your helping and ministering to people, trying to understand the presence of God in the hands of their lives, you will know from these readings that you have picked that in some way that neither you nor I can understand, you are indeed then sent to bring the glad tidings, the oil of gladness, and the glorious mantle to the folks in the hands they have received. The Holy Father himself mentioned that, the oil of gladness, when he preaches first chrism mass humbly. It is also not unlike Gaudete Sunday, which we just celebrated. Second, I would say I learned that comes in this moment, the message of La Salette. In those times with Eduardo and his classmates and confreres, I never could have imagined that I would cross paths with another La Salette again, with La Salette history. But we have. And I learned from my La Salette friends the message of Our Lady, which you helped me to remember, from La Salette, which is certainly included in your coat of arms. The purpose of the apparition of Our Lady of La Salette was reconciliation. That heritage will form your ministry as bishop and pastor, which is so necessary in our often fragmented world. The formation of those days, as I think you know, will form your life, ministry, and life in a bishop in at times surprising, unexpected ways, but always the hand of God. So the hand that you are dealt with in the message of La Salette, I believe also is tied together with a couple things the image of light. Our Holy Father recently referred to this as well when he was speaking of Gaudete Sunday in Rome. And I believe how he said how the light of Christ is shown in changing of the purple of Advent to the rose of the past Sunday. Friday morning, lit throughout our diocese, early in the morning before dawn, the first star of the Filipino Christmas novena, Simban Gabi was lit in many of our parishes. These stars light the darkness of early morning and night and help us to rejoice in the mystery of Christ who is to be born. This is not unlike, Thomas, the gospel, which now says that your light must shine before others. The light of the stars of Simbangabi, which point the way to Christ, I would dare say is not unlike the stars that so many of our Vietnamese brothers and sisters looked up to in the dark sky for guidance, direction, and hope in the days of trial when escaping from the persecution of Vietnam. Many of our people here also felt the comfort in those days of the, and the light of the Mother of Christ, Our Lady of Lavan, guiding them in those days. You, in another way, daily, will be a bearer of that same light to those in need of guidance and hope who are surrounded by darkness at times, who are trying to find their way back to God. Finally, I would add a brief word about technology and ecclesial communion in some way. You know, many of us use technology. I certainly do use some, and I've heard people reflect and boast about their, their Facebook friends. Your ministry and your mission will be to lead people to a sense of family and ecclesial communion based on authentic, more than virtual, human relationships and love, and the guidance of the Lord. You will be able to teach and remind us that God indeed, and I've said this before, will never defriend us, and we are never alone with the Lord in our midst. The text of the opening prayer, Thomas, today says the best for us all. O God, eternal shepherd, who governing your flock with watchful care, chose to join Thomas Tan your servant and priest to the College of Bishops this day. Grant, we pray, that by his holiness of life, he may everywhere prove to be a true witness to Christ. 
with we as your new family and friends here in our local church. Promise to take seriously the words of sacred scripture this day and pray always for you so that having been formed through La Salette and through the Diocese of St. Augustine and your parishes there, that now together we may pray, serve, and love one another as Christ commands us to do. We step forward in joy with you today, Thomas, in the hand that the Lord has given us all to be together in family and communion, to always seek reconciliation in the good and mercy, and in the path of light, the light of Christ, to lead us to that oil of gladness and glorious mantle. In the spirit of giving thanks to God, let us not forgive, forget to ask God for guidance and blessings in our lives. I ask you, Thomas, to continue to pray for me, for Bishop Tim Fryer, Bishop, Bishop Tim Fryer, for all of us to pray for them, and Bishop Thomas Tan Nguyen, and all bishops and clergy that we together can be an image of Christ for you in our priestly ministry. Kintua ang chiam, chong niam tri ang tintua, chung ta, sin tintua, hung dan va ban on, cho moi noi chung ta, toi sin kui hong ba ang chiam, kao nguyen cho toi, Cho duk cha tim fryer, duk cha Thomas tan nguyen, va tat ka kak muk tu. De chung toi, ko te tro tan in an, kua chua kito, trong doi son muk vu, nan zan chan van kan van tan tan. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, dear brother, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of hands? Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, is handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in that unity of that body, together with the order of bishops, under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need? I do. do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dearly beloved, let us pray to the kindness of Almighty God 
in providing for the welfare of the church will grant an abundance of his grace for this chosen one. and St. Francis, pray for us. Seven holy founders, pray for us. St. John of Capistrano, pray for us. St. Juan Diego, pray for us. St. Francis Xavier, pray for us. St. Junipero Serra, pray for us. St. Kateri Tecaquita, Pray for us. Saint Elizabeth and Bailey Seaton. Pray for us. Saint Rose Philippine Duchesne. Pray for us. Saint Theodore Garan. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Damien of Molokai. Pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier Cabrini. Pray for us. St. Mary Ann Cope. Pray for us. St. Catherine Drexel. Pray for us. Blessed Andrew of Foyen. 
pray for us. Blessed Mary rolls to Rocher. Pray for us. Blessed Miguel the Cross. Pray for us. All holy men and women. Pray for us. Lord be merciful. Lord deliver us. We pray from all evil. Lord deliver us. We pray from every sin. Lord deliver us. We pray from everlasting death. Lord deliver us. We pray by your incarnation. Lord deliver us. We pray by your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to our sinners. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you. Gracious hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this, your servant, the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who knows all things before they come to be, and who laid down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning ordained a nation of the just born of Abraham, who established rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundation of the world were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Pour out now upon this chosen one that power which is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son, Jesus Christ, the spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles, who established the church in every place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your Grant to a father knower of all hearts that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day may he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood so that always gaining your favor he may offer up the gifts of your holy church granted by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command assign offices according to your decree and loose every bond according to the power given you by the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever and ever. Amen. May God, who made you a share of the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings.
receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, adore, seal the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith, preserved unblemished, the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre, and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which we have presented for your church and for Thomas, your servant and bishop, become an offering acceptable to you. And for the good of the flock, may he whom you have raised up among your people to be high priest, be endowed by your gift with apostolic virtues through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before you children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing a sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, that the we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with the glorious martyrs, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, with Kevin our Bishop, and me your unworthy servants, who have been ordained today as the shepherd for the church, with the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you claim as your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have someone here before you. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admits to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, O oh Lord, increase the gifts of your grace. In Thomas, your servant and bishop, that he may serve you faithfully in the pastoral ministry and receive the eternal rewards of a faithful steward through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and to Jacksonville. I have learned so much through his continual guidance. And now he has led me to Orange County, California, my new diocesan home, and to this joyful celebration. To Archbishop Pierre, thank you for your faithful service as an apostolic nuncio here in the United States. Your presence today Remind us of the closeness of Pope Francis to the Church of Orange. I ask you to convey to the Holy Father my gratitude for this opportunity, and I'm humbled by his confidence in me to lead the people in the Diocese of Orange as Auxiliary Bishop. To Bishop Van, thank you so much for your warm welcome from day one when I came for the press conference on October 6th to this date of Episcopal ordination. Thank you for your inspiring words in today's homily and for your leadership, support, and friendship. I am grateful for your assistance in my transition into Episcopacy, especially how to put the zucchero at the right spot on my head. I don't know what it is. I'm still struggling with it. Maybe my Vietnamese hair or my sloppy hand, but I'm still struggling with that. But anyway, I hope that after the baby bishop workshop in Rome, I will get it straight. <laughs> bishop Esteve, thank you for being a good mentor to me. I was humbled by your confidence in my ability when you assigned St. Joseph the largest parish in the Diocese of St. Augustine to my pastoral care. God's call is mysterious, but I believe you are part of that mystery. To all priests and deacons and seminarians of the Diocese of St. Augustine uh, who are present here in this celebration, thank you so much for being part of my journey for the past 21 years. Your support and friendship are greatly appreciated. I'm grateful to my mother and father for the gift of life and for teaching me what love looks and feels like in daily life. They taught me the importance of prayer in my faith journey and centering my life in the Lord. They determined that I had vocation to the priesthood at a young age, and they were happy to attend my ordination to the priesthood in Hartford 26 years ago. May they rest in peace. I am thankful as well to my 10 sisters and brothers, their spouse, as well as their nieces and nephews. They were at my priestly ordination. They were at my 25th anniversary of my priesthood. And now they are here today. That show how supportive they have always been to me. I count it a blessing to be in a family of love, encouragement, and patience. And you know, there is something paradoxical about my siblings. The oldest is the shortest, the youngest is the tallest. <laughs> and the youngest came to the United States when he was only seven years old. He lived in Beaumont, Texas, and he picked up the Texan accent. <laughs> and when he was asked how old he was, he answered in Tex Texan accent, I'm fixing to be nine. One time after I finished my phone conversation with my friend from Salem, Massachusetts, my youngest brother came up to me and said, you know what, you speak English funny. <laughs> I laughed and said, so do you. <laughs> and he replied, you Yankee. Can you imagine that? But guess what, he later married to a pretty Vietnamese woman where he did, where did they live? They live in a Yankee state, Windsor Locks, Connecticut to be exact. So he became a Yankee too. But anyway, about four years ago, like the prodigal son, he came to his senses, repented and returned to Texas. I reckon he missed being a Texan. One of my joys is to visit them during Thanksgiving time in Beaumont, Texas, 
We have a lot of fun together, as most of them are what people call party animal. In the best sense of the word, I'm happy to see many of my friends from various stages of my life. <clears throat> I am especially pleased to see some of my St. Joseph Seminary classmates from 1966 to 1978 who are present here today. They travel from different parts of the United States, Boston, Charlotte, North Carolina, Dallas, Texas, one from Australia, and one from Vietnam. Many have sent their prayerful support through cars, Facebook, and social media. Thanks for your ongoing friendship and prayer. Please be assured of my as well. I have been blessed with abundance of friends who have become my extended family. They keep me on my toes just as my family does. I'm grateful that many of them could be here today to pray with me as I begin my new responsibility in this diocese. I am particularly grateful to have been involved in parishes in Georgia, St. Thomas the Apostle in Smyrna, St. Anne in Marietta, and the Vietnamese community in Shampley Tucker. And in Florida, Christ the King. And by the way, you know, Christ the King trained three bishops. That's the wonderful parish there. And the Vietnamese community in Arlington and St. Joseph in Mandarin. The parishioners from all these parishes have played an important role in my priestly journey. They will forever hold a special place in my heart as instrument of formation and channels of grace to me. Finally, a word of thanks to all who have welcomed me to my new home, who have been praying for me, and all who worked so hard on the many details to make sure our worship today was so beautiful, and also yesterday as well, including the diocesan choir for their beautiful music. Oh, I love the song. Well, he leaded me, and then Tan Tung Ong An. The worship office of the diocese and our chancery and diocesan personnel, master of ceremony, deacon seminarian who are serving today. The night in the dam of St. Gregory, night in dam of Malta, night and ladies of Holy Sepulchre, and knights of Columbus, fourth degree, call of God. I'm grateful to many bishops who have honored us with their presence today. My gratitude to Cardinal Mahoney and Cardinal Levada. Thank you and all the bishops for joining us in prayer today. But I'd like to recognize two particular bishops by name. The first one is Bishop Peter Rosaza, who ordained me 26 years ago in Hartford, Connecticut, even in his difficult situation. But he still make an effort to come here uh, to be with me. And the second one, as uh, you can see, one of the cons uh, co consecrator is uh, Bishop Robert Becker, and he was my pastor at Christ the King for two years. He trained me to be a bishop before he became bishop. <laughs> I am also honored to have bishop and clergy from the Eastern Churches, Orthodox, Protestant community, and Judaism and Buddhism. I thank the religious communities, all the brothers and sisters in consecrated life who are represented here today, and all the ladies that are here representing our 60 plus parishes and organization. Also, I am grateful to the Diocese of Orange Communication Department who offered the live stream this mass so those who are not able to join us in person could participate and pray with us to EWTN who assisted with the televised broadcast and to our security staff and the men and women of our local law enforcement. And finally, to our generous pastor, Monsignor Joseph Tuan Pham and the staff and the people of St. Columban Parish for hosting us today. To my new generous brothers and brother priests and deacon here in Orange County who have joined us today in prayer Thank you, thank you. I look forward to working with you to be upon the good and inspiring ministry already taking place here. And I will rely upon your advice, support, cooperation, and prayers too. Thank you for all you do so well for the faithful of this diocese and know of my love and prayers for you. To my new family and friends in the Diocese of Orange, 
Please know how grateful I am for the love and kindness you have shown to me during these past two months of transition. As your new auxiliary bishop of this beautiful diocese, I look forward to getting to know you better in the coming days as we strive to deepen our friendship with Christ through our prayer and service in His church. Before I end this remark, allow me to say a few words to the Vietnamese community in Vietnamese. Kính thưa quý ông bà và anh chị em, thật là một niềm vinh hạnh cho tôi được Đức Thánh Cha Phan Cô bổ nhiệm làm giám mục phụ tá tại địa phận Orange County này. Tôi rất cảm động vì những hồng ân Chúa đã ban cho tôi và cho tất cả chúng ta, những người tị nại Việt Nam đã được sống ổn định tự do sung túc trên nước Mỹ và đặc biệt trong quần cam của chúng ta. Tôi chân thành cảm ơn các linh mục, các tu sĩ nam nữ và đặc biệt toàn thể cộng đoàn dân chúa đã hỗ trợ tôi qua lời cầu nguyện qua thánh lễ hàng ngày và tôi đã nhận được nhiều ánh mắt, nhiều vòng tay gian rộng đón chào tôi gia nhập một vào một gia đình mới và hôm nay là ngày chính thức rước dâu về. Xin cảm ơn quý ông bà và anh chị em và xin tiếp tục cầu nguyện cho tôi để tôi được theo chân đấng mục tử nhân lành Giêsu dẫn dắt đàn chiên với yêu thương, với che chở, với những lời hướng dẫn chân tình để chúng ta cùng đồng hành với nhau, để chúng ta cùng nhau lớn mạnh trong đức tin và đức mến. Và xin Chúa chúc phúc lành cho chúng ta và đặc biệt xin mẹ la vang cùng đồng hành với chúng ta luôn. To everyone here and those participating via live stream and broadcast, Christ the King parishioners, St. Joseph parishioners in Jacksonville, please continue to pray for me so that I may ever be a worthy instrument of joy and God's grace for the faithful of Orange, and that together we may build up the people of God into an enduring and convincing side of the kingdom not only for our local church, but the world as well. And so may God bless all of you, and a little bit too early, but I can say that may you have a grace-filled Christmas and a happy new year. You are all invited to reception outside the church after Mass. Bishop Thomas Tan Nguyen will be giving blessings, and there will be a reception line outside by the tables. Bishop Thomas will be escorted there directly after a few pictures are taken. There is so much planning and work that goes into an Episcopal ordination, so many, many people to thank and acknowledge. It would take at least another half an hour to do that or more. So rather than risk anyone, I would refer you to the worship aid and the acknowledgments of this, many of the people involved. It is a work of God, which is what the liturgy is, and it could not be done without everybody's goodwill and faith. And I would like to thank many people in our diocese who have been praying for Bishop Thomas since the announcement came, and everybody here from all over the country and outside in Vietnam that are here. Advent is a blessed time, and it's been a busy time in the season of Advent and the support of so many of you has led us to this day where the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God, we have a new member of the body of bishops and a shepherd for the Church of Orange. A blessed Advent and Christmas tide to all. Thank you. Bow down for the blessing. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you as he's willed to set you as a high priest over his people. So may he make you happy in this present life and grant you a share in the happiness that is eternal. Amen. Amen. May he grant that the clergy and people he has chosen to unite by his gracious help be happily governed by his providence and your stewardship for many years to come. Amen. May they obey God's commandments freed from adversity and may they abound in all that is good submitting in faith to your ministry so that they may enjoy peace and tranquility in the present age and with you be found worthy to share in the company of the citizens of eternity. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.